Hi, everyone. I'm Eve Samples. I'm executive director at Friends of the Everglades, and we're here today to provide an orientation for our new Young Friends of the Everglades classroom kit. It's called the Everglades Learning Exploration Kit, and we developed it this year in 2021, and it will be deployed to our pilot school at Royal Palm Elementary, who are here with today to talk about it. Uh, we worked with a professional education consultant, Crystal Lucas, and we are really excited with the professional illustrations that brought Crystal's lessons to light. So um, just to give you a brief overview of the kit before Crystal dives in and orients you to the four lessons, the classroom kit will come in a bin and it will include the four lessons, both in paper and digital format for either photocopying or printing out. It will include 18 copies of two of the books that are related to the uh, lessons, several other copies of kind of bonus books about the Everglades, maps of the historic Everglades and the current drained Everglades. And I'm forgetting a couple of other items here. Oh, bear with me. Oh, I. DVD of the documentary, The Swamp, which is about the Everglades and um, boxes for dioramas that you may want to create as part of one of the lessons with your students. And finally, uh, printed Everglades champion certificates for students who complete these four lessons, or if you choose to do these on kind of an a la carte basis, do one lesson or two lessons, they're completely compatible with that. And you can um, reward the students for that participation as well. So, um, before I hand it over to Crystal, I just want to acknowledge Connie Washburn. She's one of our board members and she was a co-founder of the original Young Friends of the Everglades program. And we're very excited to revive it with this new iteration. So um, without further ado, off to you, Crystal. Thank you very much. Um, so to give everybody a little bit of background, I think uh, we met most of you when we first met um, um, virtually, of course. Uh, I have a background in education. I have a master's degree in curriculum and inquiry. I have taught um, formally sixth grade through college and I specialized in Everglades restoration actually. Um, so this kit is four lessons total and they can be used all together or they can be used individually. And I really tried to focus on things that were um, things that were academically useful. So there isn't anything in here that I feel is a waste of time or a waste of class time. Every single lesson that I wrote, I truly believe if an administrator happened to walk in, it, they would not question whatsoever what you were doing in the academic you know, vi viability of it. And so we'll look at each lesson. Um, I will spend probably about three minutes on each lesson, just giving you an idea of what it is. So this first one, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, Voice of the Everglades is a chapter book. It is an appropriate chapter book for fourth or fifth grade. You will have 18 copies of this chapter book in the kit. So this chapter book will be provided for you. Um, the reason I put 18 copies in there is because the ideal situation is that students would work in pairs. Of course, there's always the couple of students who refuse to work with a partner. And so there are books to accommodate that. Um, the Duration is right here, which of course is as flexible as you want it to be. You can make it much longer, you can make it much shorter, but it gives you an idea of what I envision class time commitment might be. Um, your standards are all here. It's cross-curricular, so there's language arts standards, there's science standards, there's math standards, um, social studies standards are all hit. And so you can align those um, in your lesson plans. And there is a section with teacher notes and instructions for every single lesson. And so I wrote that really, it's me speaking to you and what I had in mind. One of my biggest things when I create lessons for nonprofits especially is I'm not in your class. I don't know your students the way that you do. And so I try and write all of my lessons with you being in charge. If you choose to alter it or you choose to change it, the, the, lesson still will work and you can read it and move it the way that you want to. Um, so this one is one that I'm super excited about. I, in um, my most recent teaching three years ago, two years ago, I quit um, teaching middle school and I taught middle school for three and a half years. And my middle school classes, we use tons of choice boards. And the reason why I love choice boards, if you've ever used them, then you could probably agree. 
Choice boards are really amazing because they help the students feel like they have ownership over what they create and what they do. And so the students are gonna read the book and answer a bunch of questions, but this would be the culminating activity. Um, they have a choice board in front of them where they can create all sorts of things. So one of the things that can be created is a short story. They could design a video game. They could build a diorama. They could write a screenplay. The list goes on and on. One of the really interesting things about this choice board, I feel, is I ask you to, after they've done their project, to join another student when they present and give them a little bit more class time, maybe another class period, to take each of their individual activities and put them together to do a joint presentation. And what I mean by that is a student might design a movie poster, but then another student might write a script and a student might make a podcast and another student might make a playlist. And you put those two together and you have a really dynamic project where it went from just what can I do to what can we do together to make this even better. And so that was my hope with this choice board. Um, it's beautifully illustrated by Caitlin who brought everything that I kind of had envisioned um, to life through illustrations. So for each chapter of the book, the, chap the book I believe is offhand eight chapters. Um, each chapter of the book I did uh, reading questions for understanding. And these are questions that are a little bit beyond just what color was Marjorie's shirt. They're really asking um, deeper things that I think you're expected to be asking as a teacher, like how did the landowners, how did, what was, um, explain your thoughts. And so every single chapter has um, questions that go with it. And then there are also further down, um, there is an answer key that gives you the answers. So that way you don't have to go through and read the entire book and answer all the questions yourself, which is a lifesaver if you're a teacher. Um, and so that is the first lesson. So the first lesson is reading. They're gonna be reading that book together, either in independent reading time or in group reading. Um, it's a really, really wonderful book. Can't wait for you guys to get the kit and see it. And then it culminates with that choice board activity. The second lesson plan is a very science heavy lesson plan, but doesn't take a lot of time on your end. Um, it is the species of the greater Everglades. So it's all endangered and threatened species. Um, it takes about four 45 minute class periods, plus or minus. The standards that are addressed, once again, are really cross-curricular. We have language arts standards, social studies standards, and science standards. Um, the idea behind this one is a little bit more multifaceted. The students are going to have a handful of things that they're going to be using to go on a mission. And this is their mission right here. They're going to act like they are journalists. They're investigative journalists. And they're trying to figure out about the endangered and threatened species of the Florida Everglades. And what do they have in common and compare and contrast um, what the Everglades was like versus what it's like now. What's impacting these species? How are these species commonly being impacted? And how are they being impacted differently? Um, this one has guiding questions that are gonna help them in researching their species. And then there are also write-ups about each species that I'll jump to and then go back. So each species has a write-up about it. So students could be put into pairs or individually and they can each be given a species of study. So there's the manatee and the Florida panther there is the Eastern Indigo snake. So there are species that they might be familiar with. And then there are species on here that they probably have never heard of before. American alligators, one they probably know, but then the Cape Sable Seaside Sparrow, which is a really, really small bird they may never have heard of. And so each of these species have really descriptive write-ups that talk about where they live, how they reproduce, what's affecting their habitat, how their habitat is being degraded or what factors are impacting them. A second part of this lesson is that they are going to be comparing and contrasting Florida in the past versus Florida today. And so in that kit, there are two maps. There's a historical map of Florida from the 1860s, and then there's a modern map of Florida showing that it's dramatically different. Um, one of the things that I have also is I have um, a lot of differentiation in here, and this is an example of one. 
there is a Florida map activity where they're asked to color code and to write the names of things like oceans, major cities, um, bodies of water like like Okeechobee. So this would be the little bit tougher version. Um, all the things that it's being asked for are right here, but the lines are missing. And then you go over to the little bit more difficult one, or I'm sorry, the little bit easier, more scaffold version. And you have lines that help tell you where you need to put things and help guide you as to what we're being asked for. Um, and there's differentiation like that throughout. Um, in the questions that are asked to be answered, I have sentence stems and most of them that help guide thinking. It's not loading very fast. That help guide thinking. Um, this is another activity in this lesson. And, and this lesson is one of the broader ones. So pieces of it could be used that fit your style better or fit your students. And then other pieces could be ignored. So this is a one pager. If you've ever used one of those, it's a wonderful way to take large amounts of information and put it on a page and have some ownership of it. And so it's purposely left black and white. And there's instructions on here on how to use a one pager if you've never used one but there is room for you to, for them to write facts along the side and it explains how the different boxes can be broken down with ideas for understanding. Um, and that's a pretty interesting lesson that has multi facets to it that you could choose to use in whatever way meets your needs. Um, the third lesson is one that I personally really love. You are gonna get 18 beautiful copies of a brand new book that was just released. Marjorie Saves the Everglades. It's a children's book. Probably a normal fourth or fifth grader would look at this book and think, why are you giving me this kid's book? And so what I did was I took it and took it one step farther and up to their level. So they would ideally have this book read to them and then they would break off into pairs and work on this book again. I took the literary words and um, literary terms that you're expected to know when you're a fourth grader and put them on a bingo sheet. And so these are all words that if you're a fourth or fifth grade teacher, you're probably very familiar with teaching or trying to teach your students, such as publisher, character, noun, idiom, adjective. And I made it into a bingo board. And what they would do is a student and a partner would take the book and they would take their bingo card and the worksheet that goes with it. And they would go sit somewhere quiet and they would find examples of every single one of these, either making a traditional bingo sheet, or if you have a group of students who are more advanced, you can make it more difficult by saying that they need to do an X or they need to do a picture frame, just like you would with a bingo card. Um, so you really have a lot of control as the teacher knowing what their ability is. If a student is a little bit lower and it's gonna take a little bit more time for them, then you can say, okay, just do the four corners, publisher, exclamation, verb, and author. Or maybe they are known to have a problem with nouns and you can hand pick which ones you want them to go find. Um, and so this has a couple of differentiations as well. One version is the term and the definition is there. Another version is the term is there, but the definition is missing. So that gives you the opportunity to ask them to research what the definition is and then go find it. Or another option is completely blank and you can pick which terms you want them to go find and then they would go and find it. And so they will be looking for those terms in the book and then putting an example of that and where it was used. And you could make it a competition if your class thrives on competition, you could make it a competition among group members, or you could make it no competition at all and just display these amazing bingo cards after they've put the hard work into it. So that was a really fun way to take what would be construed as a children's book that might be too babyish or too low level for that group of kids and make it something that's definitely a little bit more difficult, but most of all showing um, a standard that you have to hit as a teacher. The last one is one of the more challenging lesson plans out of the group. It's changes to our home, water quality and the impact on Florida. This lesson definitely has more reading in it than some of the other lessons. And the reading is more science-based, but at the same time, I feel like it has one of the funnest hands-on projects. 
So the end result, which is provided for you here in a little picture, is they are gonna be making a diorama using um, species from the Everglades. How they're gonna to get to this diorama is comparing and contrasting Florida today versus yesterday, and then looking at stormwater treatment areas and what they are and what they do for the environment in Florida. So there are a handful of pages that break down what happened in Florida and how the environment was and then how the environment was changed in order to meet our needs as citizens. Um, throughout this, all the reading has vocabulary words that I felt were important for them to know as Floridians and as future scientists. And all those vocabulary words are highlighted through bold print and underline. And at the end, there's a vocabulary exercise that they could do. So they would read this either individually as a class with a pair, and it goes through past, present, and future. And then it goes into STAs and what STAs are, which by the way, are stormwater treatment areas and how they impact Florida and how they were made to mimic the Everglades that we filled in. And so there are, again, Caitlin did a wonderful job taking really complex material and making it visually appealing to students. Um, there are pictures and there are diagrams. There are guiding questions that ask them to compare and contrast Florida in the past and Florida today. You'll see that I have the question, but then I also have some um, leading thoughts and some sentence stems that help them. And then there are then diagrams that they would compare and contrast, which are a big part of any classroom. And then there are vocabulary sheets um, I use a lot of Anita Archer because I went to an Anita Archer training in Portland for a week. And one of Anita Archer's big things is using these sorts of fryer models. And instead of a regular fryer model that would be a full page per term, I did a mini version where they have the term, they have the meaning, and then they can come up with a cue that means something to them so that they have educational ownership. And um, that's a wonderful way for them to take that complex vocabulary and break it down. And then Caitlin did a great job. You would take these um, cutouts and ideally they would be photocopied onto cardstock um, so that they would stand up better. And if you don't have access to cardstock, then they could be photocopied and then pasted onto maybe the back of like a six pack cardboard so that when they cut out, they're a little bit rigid. And the student's going to pick and create their own Everglades ecosystem diorama with the species that are here. And then there's also room for them to draw their own species. And with that, I'm sorry that it's vertical, but with that, we have another sheet that they fill out that they, they basically explain why they chose what they chose and how they all interact. So if you chose the hunter and you chose the duck and you chose the sawgrass, then you would say, what does it do? Well, the duck lives in the marsh and it filter feeds off the top of the water. Why did I pick it? Obviously they're fourth and fifth grade. So you're gonna to have to push them to think more than I love ducks, but they're also gonna answer, how does it work within an STA? So what's its purpose? What's its role and how does it interact with the other ones? And so it takes what would be a fun cut and paste activity and ups the ante a little bit and they have to take what they learned in the STA reading and figure it out um, and the interactions. And then of course, there's the beautiful Everglades Champion Certificate that whenever you feel it's appropriate, you can present your class with so that they feel like they are Everglades Champions, which they absolutely would be. So that is a bird's eye view of the kit that you're gonna have in your hands um, like I said, I have teacher instructions in there that I wrote in a manner so that hopefully you feel like you can take them and mold them however you need. Um, I would be more than happy to answer any questions about specifics that I feel like I went a million miles an hour on something that took me three and a half months to write. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal, so much. Um, any questions for Crystal? Well, we are very excited to deliver this to Royal Palm Elementary School, and we will remain available as a resource if you do have questions after you get the kit in your hands. And 
This is just deeply meaningful for us at Friends of the Everglades because our founder, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, truly believed that educating young people was critical to saving the Everglades. So reviving this program means a lot to us, and we're delighted that you're here to participate as our pilot partners. So um, I know that Connie has a, a few words she wants to say, uh, but before I stop the recording, is there anything else we need to address? I just Can wanted to say to Crystal that it's beautifully done. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. And the illustrations, I was, I, yes. I couldn't see it very well because it's in the phone, so it's hard to see, but it was beautifully done. And the vocabulary that it seems that you were using, I mean, I, I also saw it from far, and I, I mean, it's little. It seems also that, that you did use very high end, you know, high, high vocabulary for the children. So that's good too. Thank you. And Miss Miss Garcia, when I yes. come and bring the kit to you, you will see it in person, and um, you know it'll be the right size, and you can hopefully see how the children interact with it as the lessons go along. Beautiful. Thank you. We're looking forward to this. Us too. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, which we will share with other schools as needed, so we can discuss some more particulars.